Hi everybody, welcome to Raising Vibrations and your assignment today. And um, we're going to be looking at another astrology chart for our Patreon subscriber chart readings. And um, as always, like I say in every video, I'm super excited to be able to be talking about this astrology in this way. And, um, you know, nourishing our way of seeing the reality of the soul and applying evolutionary astrology as the tool to access that deep sense of um, self-awareness. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump into this chart. And as always, we always look at Pluto as the bottom line of the chart, right? Because this is where the deep unconscious memories of the soul are um, residing in. This is the, the place that the soul says, this is where I've been experiencing my trajectory. And even though the identity of the soul doesn't, you know, communicate in that way, it's very important for us to personify it because we wouldn't be able to attach to that. And that in and of itself is the nature of the actual moon in the chart, right? The ability to emotionally relate to something in a way that's personal to us. Okay, so Pluto in the 11th house of the astrology chart. This is a, a juicy one because, you know, there are, of course, little pockets of wisdom that each Pluto holds within its journey around the zodiac. And when we get to the 11th house Pluto, this is the soul that has three stages in its evolutionary development. The first one is that it's deeply linked with needing to, well, not needing to, but experiencing deep cycles of a repression. And these cycles of repression or experiences of repression is usually a result of the soul beginning to purge away all outmoded or outdated psychological and emotional uh, rules, regulations, conditions, definitions, self-definitions, the groups, all of this type of stuff, okay? So it's about the liberation process from everything that is outdated, because ultimately the 11th house Pluto is actually coming out to accelerate the nature of its evolution through literally breaking off everything that no longer represents its identity, which can create a confusing thing on and of its own, because for an 11th house Pluto to go through that dynamic, it can be very easy to get stuck into the past as a way of attaching to a feeling of security. And the security that's enrooted in the Pluto dynamic is because it's empowering. It's something that's familiar. So for the first couple of lifetimes, the soul will have to go through a certain amount of psychological dynamics in which the internalized judgments or criticisms or feelings of rejection or isolation are experienced because of a need to not break free in a sense, but to experience one's own individuality in a different way to the environment. Now, the point of this all is to establish the next phase of the Plutonian journey, which in this particular case, the soul has actually progressed out of and is beginning to merge with the final stages of the evolutionary intention. But the middle ground or the middle phase has a lot to do with a complete rejection of everything and a rebelliousness that leads to a sense of detachment so deep that a feeling of perspex glass exists between themselves and reality. And so the soul in this phase carries psychological memories in which belonging to groups or belonging to associations or you know, merging with different types of um, ways in which people can express creativity or individuality and feel sometimes that they are out or out by the group's definition. In other words, their sense of individuality and the group's sense of individuality begins to separate. They feel that they can't acknowledge, they have to acknowledge their own creativity or their polarity, Pluto fifth house, right? And when they do this, it begins to reveal the ongoing outgrowing of, <clears throat> of the soul's um, psychological state of acceleration. In other words, to break free from the mold and to say, this is my individuality. So this phase can be difficult because it's, it's progressively or consistently and progressively testing what that individuality looks like. And it can be disturbing because it can feel as if you don't know who you are. Now, this is not always negative, even though I might have explained this as a bit of a negative experience. It's more along the lines that the world itself currently at the moment is deeply conditioned by a repression of individuality. So to express one's individuality with a Pluto 11th house can feel as if you're the black sheep. 
And it's these two cycles that really contain a lot of feelings of not being able to acknowledge yourself because of the fact that psychologically and in a survival stated way, you've had to reject that. So you've never known how to fully embrace that. Now, with the final phase of the Pluto transit through the 11th house, the soul progressively becomes aware that its individuality is a source of inspiration and that its inspiration is leading us to break free from the outmoded thinking patterns and that that's the job. That's your role. Your role is to think differently. Your role is to be different. Your role is to individuate and be there for humanitarian activities, regardless of what people think, perceive, or project. Because in this particular instance, the nature of the Pluto says, here, I'm learning how to change the patterns, but I'm also learning how to encourage other people to see that limitations exist when we stay in the same patterns all the time. And I'm here to individuate that. So it's a lonely path to walk, but it's the, the path of the leader with Pluto in the 11th house. Now, for this soul over here, you can see that this is very clear, that this is not just a lifetime of simply understanding that, but actually living it. If you observe, you see their south node in the 10th house in Leo represents lifetimes of, you know, finding a sense of identity and being deeply absorbed in the creative process, right? However, with the Mars conjunct Aquarius, or Mars conjunct the North Node in Aquarius, and both of them being in the fourth house, you can see that this is a soul that is literally here to individuate themselves from all of the perceptions of truth and realities and points of views, and to literally stand on their own and say, I'm different, and my difference, even though it creates a sort of shocking experience or an unexpected way of interacting, is the very nature of evolution. And so therefore I'm an active agent in evolutionary dynamics that's here to help us grow out of our stagnant patterns. Part of this dynamic as well is also liberating themselves from the conditioning of the home environment. Because remember that Aquarius or Uranus, 11th house, reflects the nature of changing the patterns. So this is the soul that will grow up in a home, will be conditioned a certain way, and then when they're growing up, or when they're living in their own way, has to live completely differently to the way that they were conditioned as a way to actually experience the process of deconditioning and to liberate themselves from the ideologies, the perspectives, the points of views, everything, and lead them into a different path. And this is the ongoing progression of the soul. Now, you can see here with Jupiter conjunct Saturn, or should I say, sorry, Jupiter conjunct Sagittarius, that's what I wanted to say, in the first house, Right, Jupiter in Scorpio, conjunct Neptune in Sagittarius. There we go. This is a soul that clearly is also here to align their intuitive gifts and express their psychic ability and allow themselves to feel the deep internal knowingness, even though it can be perceived as deeply abstract. Ironically, with a lot of Gemini on the other side, this is about the capacity to communicate one's own deep inner knowing and to find structure in a way that takes an understanding of an abstract form and place it into something that's tangible in order for us to digest so that whatever it is that we are digesting that the soul is here to share in terms of wisdom is to be able to accelerate our own truth. So again, one of the dynamics with this chart is Saturn in the seventh house, Moon in the seventh house, learning to really relate to people in a practical way and allow for emotional sort of interrelatability in order for there to be a sense of connection and a sense of belonging. Okay, so I hope that you got a lot out of this uh, conversation today and um, for those of you that are following this series on YouTube, thanks very much for your time and I hope you learned from that as well. And like I said, for the Patreon that uh, is subscribing and um, for your time that you've offered over here, I deeply appreciate it. And uh, until next time, guys, have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.